wavelength mass spectrometry is and how it can be used to measure the relative mass of isotopes and find the relative abundance of isotopes in a sample of an element. So there are five main steps to the mass spectrometry process and it's very important that you know these five different steps. So the first one, it starts with a V, which is going to be vaporization. So what is vaporization? Well, vaporization includes getting the sample from a solid or liquid and you're in state and changing it into a gaseous state. The vaporized sample is then passed into the ionization chamber, but it needs to be in gas state. Just remember this so we can separate the individual particles. So as you can see, this is where the vaporized sample will go in. Then the next process, or well, the next step is going to be ionization. So this is a really key step because the sample is bombarded by a stream of electrons emitted by an electrically heated metal coil. This sample is ionized by knocking off one or more electrons to give off a positive ions and the atoms are turned into ions and a positive charge is formed. The resulting unpositive ions then pass through holes in parallel plates under the influence of electric field where they are accelerated, as you can see here. So that's going to be our third step. So as I mentioned, the positively charged ionization chamber repels the positively charged ions, which accelerate towards the negatively charged plates. The speed at which they accelerate depends on their mass. The lighter ions move faster than the heavier molecules. So as you can see, this happens over here in the, this is the ionization chamber, and this is where they will then accelerate. The next step is going to be deflection. So this is when the stream of positive ions is deflected by a magnetic field. So as you can see, we have our magnetic fields here. The size of the deflection depends upon the ratio of the ion's mass to its charge. The lighter the ion's mass, the more deflection. So as you can see, it will go like this. But then the ions with the smaller charge will deflect less. So ions with a charge greater than plus one will deflect more. And then the last step of mass spectrometry is going to be detection. So why, what is detection? So detection is when the beam of ions passing through the machine is detected electricity, and the detection will give us the mass and abundance values. So the smaller mass and the, so as I mentioned before, it's important to remember that the smaller the mass, the higher the charge, and the greater the deflection. So then they are recorded on a detector, which measures both that mass and the relative amounts of all the ions present. We can then look at this on a graph over here, which is mass to relative abundance. So this is important because we can use this to calculate the relative atomic mass of an element and the abundancy of the isotopes. So for example here, let's say we were looking at an element and this was one mass, let's say it was 205 and this is another mass, it's 204. And the abundancy of this is going to be 75%, and the abund abundancy of this is 25%. We can then use that, as we know, to calculate our relative atomic mass. So this is very important to remember because then you know that this is the process of mass spectrometry, and this is how we can find relative atomic mass. Thank you for listening.